Good morning, Facebook, um, fellow believers. I uh, didn't tag anyone specifically in this video. Um, I just want to encourage you from the Word of God. Excuse my voice, was yelling yesterday. Um, I want to talk about encouragement from the scriptures that God has given us as believers. Um, those who believed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and those who made a declaration of a profession of faith unto the gospel of Jesus Christ to be saved for the coming wrath of God upon the world because sin must be judged. But those that have put their faith in Jesus, not only were you baptized in water, but you were also baptized in the spirit. We're going to talk about how God has given us <clears throat> an overcoming spirit. Key scripture to understand, we're about to go in John 16, uh, 33. And only in the Lord can you have peace. And the Lord has given us an overcoming spirit. Not that your spirit is able over to over uh, able to overcome adversity and persecution for the life of a believer and a child of God and a Christian, but the Holy Ghost. He has come to help you. He has come to aid you. He has come to teach you. He has come to exhort you. He's come to convict you. Not only you, but the world through the preaching of the gospel. And so God has given us the overcoming spirit. And I know there's a scripture in, I believe in the book of Timothy that says, God has not given us uh, a timid spirit to be afraid. But God has given us a spirit of power. That's from him. Love. That's from him. He pours his love in our heart to continue to, um, sorry, my son's praising the Lord, to continue to love him and to keep his commands. And in keeping his commands, he reveals himself to you and continues to manifest his love to you through that, the overcoming spirit, the Holy Ghost. And self-discipline, that means to be self-disciplined to the word of God and to obey God and to reject all ungodliness. In fact, in the book of Titus, it says that um, about God's power, he teaches us to say no to ungodliness. The Holy Spirit has come. And God has given us not only the spirit of faith, but an overcoming spirit to walk out a godly life in God, to participate in God's divine nature. One of the things we're going to talk about today is peace in the Lord. Um, you're going to go through trials and tribulations as a child of God. And as the book of Peter talks about that, um, don't think it's strange that the fire of deal has come upon you. Uh, to test your faith because your allegiance has to be proven to Christ. And even in the book of Malachi, the Lord says that he will sit and he will refine you and he will purify you, right? He will purify the Levites, which was his priesthood. And we are the priesthood of Jesus, you and I, every day. We go through this tribulation. We go through these trials, but the Bible says um, anyone who wants to live a godly life, will suffer persecution. You will go through these trials. That's part of the reason why Jesus baptizes in the spirit and fire. Not only is he baptizes in the spirit, but he leads us through the fire in this world because God's wrath is burning against the world. But as you're being led through the fire, the, the wrath of God, because now you have peace with God through the blood of the lamb and the wrath of God is satisfied. Once you accept the finished work of the gospel of Jesus Christ and you put your trust in him and you receive the grace of God in your life, forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus Christ. And then he baptized you in the spirit. But the Holy Ghost is going to help you to overcome the things of the world. God, on every side, the Bible says we're perplexed, we're crushed, struck down, but not abandoned. Right. That's in the book of Corinthians. But who is carrying us? The Lord is carrying us because the prophecy out of Isaiah goes with what we're teaching today is that the Lord said, when the flood waters come to your neck, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire of the world, because God's anger is against the world and the world will be judged one day. And we know that the prince of the world has already been judged at the cross. He has no power. He has no authority over the child of God anymore. Jesus has delivered you from your taskmaster and from sins. And he's called us out of darkness into the light of the kingdom of his son of whom he loves. But it's the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit that will enable you. We need to be submissive to the Holy Spirit, especially in this wicked and perverse time that we are living in. This is the last hour, little children. House of Israel. You need to hear the word of the Lord. 
and let the word of the Lord go inside of your heart and do not reject the counsel of God, especially in this particular hour that we are in, because you know what's fixing to happen? Not only is the saints fixing to face more tribulation and persecution, but also the world, that the world may know righteousness because Jesus is the righteous one. He was to come on. He is who was and is to come. The almighty one of God and he's coming again apart from salvation. He's coming for redemption for the body of Jesus Christ. And he's coming to judge the world in the righteousness of God. So I'm going to switch back to the believers. You know, so many fellow peers of mine, I, I hate to see them go through so much distress, so much anxiety, so much fear. And they may be saved. But they're not abiding in the Lord. They're not abiding in his will. And their mind is still governed by the flesh. They're still accustomed to their old lifestyle. But thank God for the helper. The Holy Spirit wants to help you and direct you into the will of God for your life. Not only is the Holy Spirit the seal of your salvation. Not, not only does the Holy Spirit preach the gospel witness unto the law and the prophets concerning God, the eternal son. But he has come to transform you into the image of Jesus Christ and to restore with the ministry of reconciliation, your brokenness, your sin inside of you. Uh, so many of you, God wants to put his hand upon you, but you won't let him, you won't let him work in your life. You won't, you want to keep those people around you when God is telling you, Hey, let me remove those people out of your life, but you keep going back into Egypt and some of you, God is going and rescuing, but there will come a day. When the Lord just stops knocking and it becomes a very dangerous place, especially if you're laying the acts of repentance over again in the elementary stages of Christ, like the water baptism and keep going back to the same thing and, and confess and repentance again. It's time for us, time for us to grow up. You need to grow up in your salvation and you need to train yourself in the righteousness of the word of God. And God is trying to pull some of you out, but you want to stay there. And if you want to stay there, it's a free will of choice. You want to abide in darkness. See, in God, there is no darkness. He's he's uh, personified as light, but God is not light. In him is no darkness at all. Some of you need to be reborn again. You may have been baptized in the water, but I'm talking about a, a full baptism, baptism of the Holy Spirit that your life may be hidden in Jesus Christ and that you would have peace in your heart and that God would just drive out all fear through the perfect love of his Holy Spirit. Some of you are lacking the love of God in your life. Some of you are um, in, a, in a stage of depression and oppression and grief and sorrow. That's not from God, that is from the devil and that's because the consequences of our sins. Sin brings brokenness, loneliness and rejection, right? But Christ came that you may have life and life to the fullest and have an abundance of life. This abundance of life is from the springing up of the wells of salvation. You know, Jeremiah talks about it. Isaiah talks about the wells of salvation. Jesus is the living water and all those who come to him, he will never drive away. But the way you come to him, you must acknowledge all your sins. You can't hide nothing from the Lord. He already knows what's in your heart. But if you don't confess those sins and you don't ask him to heal you and cleanse you and deliver you and set you free, then you're still in bondage. I don't care how much you know the scripture, how much you know, you say you know the Lord. Only the Holy Spirit discloses the Lord to you in your heart. Only the Holy Spirit brings you communion uh, with you, uh, with the Father and with the Son and continue manifest His love as you obey Him. You know, a very interesting scripture I was reading in Deuteronomy. So many saints are sick right now because they're not hearkening to the voice of the Lord. In the book of Deuteronomy, God, like He's listing in Deuteronomy through Moses, actually through the Holy Spirit that was in Moses, um, He's listing the blessings and the curses for disobedience, right? And, and you know, it kind of saddens me. A lot of Christians are in a in backsl backsliding stages. They haven't fully renounced the Lord. They're not in an apostasy state. No, they're just backsliding. If they continue backsliding, God is going after them, but they're rejecting the love of God. They're rejecting the voice of the Holy Spirit. So therefore, they're following underneath the curses and, and Deuteronomy. It's so sad to see a lot of believers there that are just in a backsliding stage and God wants to bring them out, but they love darkness and they love sin. And one day sin will be judged. And even though like they're still in their sins, I'm talking to some believers that are in backsliding. We're talking about a different stage. They're, they haven't fully renounced the Lord, but they're not serving God. They're serving sin and they're serving flesh. So they're in the curses and that kind of hurts me to see that and it hurts the Lord. 
and they're wondering why the finances are not getting blessed. They're wondering why they're getting sick. You know, very ancient scripture, uh, Moses disobeyed the Lord because he struck the rock twice. God never does uh, things twice. Keep this in mind. Moses allowed, uh, the Lord allowed Moses to see the land of, of, of Canaan where they're going to cross over toward the Jordan, right? And, and, and in the book of Joshua, the Lord allows them to see it. But Moses couldn't cross over because he disobeyed the Lord. God judged the sin. Even Moses was a great leader in Christ. But still, if we sin against the Lord, like it's very severe in the courts of the Lord. I don't care how long you've been serving the Lord. Let's take a lesson from Moses, right? But he goes, Joshua, the son of Nun, is going to succeed you. And tell Joshua to tell the Israelites that when they cross over, see, God has crossed you over from death to life in Christ Jesus. And you're enjoying, you're enjoying not only the blessing for the forgiveness of sins, right? That was to come to first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. But you're also sharing in their common will, meaning God's going to take care of you, clothe you, feed you. And some of us have forgotten the Lord. And God even gave the Israelites warning in the book of Joshua. Tell them that when they cross over, do not forget me. They're going to enjoy the milk, the, the land of honey. But when they cross over, tell them not to forget me. See, God already knew they were going to forgive them. But see, God's mercy was already coming to them before the judgment. You know, and, and the judgment for their sins and the consequences of sin. And some of them got judged because they started worship everything. They put things above God. And so therefore they lost their joy. They lost their peace because God is the joy of our salvation. When you put your job or anything else above God, you lose peace. But whenever you and I have been caught into the service of the gospel through the gospel of Jesus Christ, and when you're not ministering the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit, you lose your joy, you lose your peace because you and I have been called in service to God, the eternal son, by God's testimony of his words. And so, it, you know, in the book of Deuteronomy 28, the curses begin to follow them. Some would start getting confusion. God says, if you forgive me and you disobey my word, I'll send confusion. I'll send information in your loins. It's time to wake up. This is not from the government, everything that's going on. That's a lie. That's a lie from the devil. Scripture clearly talks about this already. And God gives warning first to his house and then to the nations. He's giving warning to us. And it's sad because a lot of people don't heed that warning. A lot of people say, oh, we don't have to live by the Old Testament. That's that's. That's a lie from the devil because it's the eternal word of God. God's word is God breath and scripture able to rebuke, correct and exhort and teach and discipline that the man of God or the woman of God may be thoroughly equipped. And the word of God rightly trains our senses to know what is good and what is evil. Right. And then the blessings are, of course, you should be the head and not the tail. Not meaning God's going to bless you with riches, but he's going to give you what you need. So many saints are the tail right now because they're disobeying God. Part of the stipulation of, of a kingdom principle in a book of Deuteronomy is that God says, I will bless you if you obey me. So you'll have peace. Your storehouse will be blessed, but most of God will reveal himself to you because he longs to have a relationship with you. So we're going to get into John 16. That was a word of prophecy, a word of encouragement. Before we get into the word of God, so praise the Lord. Um, I'm going to start in John 16, and wherever the Holy Spirit wants to do, he's going to do it. Just bear with me, my voice kind of hurts. Um, John 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me, you may have peace. I'm going to stop right there. Only in Christ, if you're saved and you don't have peace, Right. As a believer, you should have the peace of God. But if you don't have peace, that's because you're not in Christ. Really, you're out of step of the spirit. You're not in step with the spirit. You're not doing the father's will, nor you listening to his son as a child of God. Many of you may be disciplined. Me, many of you may be wrestling with anxiety, fear. That's because you're not letting the Holy Spirit live out the life of Jesus in your life. Because Jesus said these things I have spoken to you that in me, there's that uh, conjunction right there in me. You may have peace. It's only in Christ can you experience the divine gift of the Holy Spirit of peace. Because as it says in the epistles, right, um, that you may bear fruit through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. This is something I have talked about the other day. If you're in the will of God, the Holy Spirit's going to uh, be a witness unto Jesus and to the gospel, first and foremost in your life. And as you submit to the gospel, 
God will give you more of the Holy Spirit. And as you're submissive to the kingdom of God and preaching the word, you're going to bear the fruits of Jesus Christ. Love, joy, kindness, meekness, humility, forbearance, self-control, resistance, sin. You know what I mean? But if you're not preaching the gospel, God is coming and examining the fruit of the tree. Think about this body. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? And this tree that is planted in the garden of the Lord, right? In the new Jerusalem is supposed to bear fruit unto the gospel first. See, you're trying to bear fruit and get fruit from the spirit, but you won't even listen to God to go allow him. I'm not going to say just go out there and start laying hands. No, that's not what I'm saying. God will move in the time, but you can't. God can't take you there to the promised land until you submit to him. And many of you are going around in the wilderness 40 years, even after, even like God showed him his work for 40 years and they were rebellious, right? And some of you are 40 years in the wilderness right now and God has showed you amazing things in, in your life, but you still won't submit to his son. God has shown you grand things. God has answered prayers. And God has shown up and manifested mightily through his manifold grace of the gifts of the Holy Spirit right in your life. Whether it was strength, whether it was the gift of faith that can move mountains by the power of the Holy Spirit. Whether it was God showing you miracle, but you still don't have peace because you don't want to listen to the Lord. I'm going to continue on. In the world, you will have tribulation, right? And I'm talking about today. That God will give you an overcoming spirit. And the overcoming spirit is our faith in Jesus Christ. Right? And Jesus pours out more of the Holy Spirit when you listen to him. It's in that secret place in the chambers of the heart where you're a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he don't call us servants, he calls us friends. Wouldn't you want to be a friend of the King of Israel? Wouldn't you want to know the Father's business deeper? Yes, it's in the Word, but I'm talking about deeper things of God. That is a friendship. And, and not that God places his trust in mortals, right? But God wants to share things with you as a friend. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. He wants to reveal the plans of the Father for you and for me. And that's first and foremost to preach the gospel. How do you expect to receive uh, wisdom and revelation from the friend, right? Uh, who is at the right hand of Abba, the Father? How do you expect to receive those things from the Lord Jesus Christ? And, and, you know, you see the, the Lord's other people doing those things in the spirit and you want to do those things, but because you won't be submissive to the Lord. And like he told Paul, you know, is it hard for you to kick against the goats? Don't be stiff necked to the Holy Spirit. That's why the Lord has blasted some of y'all storehouse. That's why the Lord has allowed the plague to touch some of y'all body because you won't receive back from Deuteronomy, obeying him and walking humbly. You're not going to walk it perfect. But the perfect one lives in you, the overcoming spirit, our faith. It's the spirit of faith. The Holy Spirit seals your faith. The Holy Spirit reveals Jesus. It's the work and power of God. It has nothing to do with me or you at the end of the day. It's not like I, I had the power to put my faith in God. I had the power to say myself, no. The Holy Spirit gave me the power to believe in God. The Holy Spirit gave me the faith to trust in Jesus and these trials and these tribulations that were destined to come. Because Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and all this will be added unto you. Right? He knows what you need. But he knows the more important need is the need in the heart. Because the heart is longing for God. And you're trying to fulfill the void in your heart with other things. And let me tell you something, my friends. That, that won't work. It's only the work of the Holy Spirit. That's it. No other thing can do. I don't care how much you try to love your children, how much you try to love your husband, how much you try to do things out there to fulfill that. Only that's for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I'm going to continue on. I'm going to back up. It says, in the world, you will have tribulations. And please don't be offended about this. United States and all the other nations are not the nation of God. And... I'm not taking aim at nobody, and if you feel some type of way, take it up with the Lord. I just have to speak the truth in Christ. This nation, the United States, was never the nation of God. I'm tired of hearing others say, saying this nation served the Lord. No, it didn't. All nations are in rebellion to God, according to the prophet Jeremiah, right? The nation was always Israel and Gentiles. The United States is a Gentile nation. Hello, right? God has called the Gentiles unto the gospel to be joined to the house of Israel. Our, our citizenship is in heaven. 
It's time to wake up, saints. Quit letting other pastors that are saying this deceive you because they're misleading you and they're taking you away from the voice of the Lord. Scripture does not confirm that whatsoever. Show me in the scripture where it is and I will show you in the scripture what God is saying right now. Not me, but the power of Christ in me will show us. Right? And so they're misleading you and they're misguiding you. Why? To keep for, to make you forget the name of the Lord. And that is a spirit of divination. That is a spirit of witchcraft. That is not even the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will bring all things into remembrance what Jesus said. And the Holy Spirit only testifies to this word. He will not add. He will not take away. So this nations and the other nations are receiving the plague. It's time to come up. We are in the tribulation. And the church in the Old Testament even went through the tribulation. But guess what? And Isaiah, God said, I set my spirit among them and I put my spirit in them. And I led them by the right hand of Moses. And my glorious arm was out uh, at the right hand of Moses. And I led my people up out of Egypt. What do you think we are spiritually, children of God? But here's the good news. In Christ, you can have that. You can have his peace. You can have the full blessings of God in your life. And like I talked about earlier in the segment of the video, is that um, you can also share in the commonwealth of Israel. We're not poor people, we're blessed people. But you need to seek the kingdom of God. It's time to wake up. It's time to sow righteousness. It's time to sow the word of God in your life. What's keeping you from the word of God? What's keeping you from spending time with your father in the morning and his son, Jesus Christ? What's keeping you from being stiff necked to the Holy Spirit? It's pride. That's a spirit of pride. That's why you don't have peace. But God has given us the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome all things in our life. Because it's not our own strength, it's not our own power. God is right there as we proclaimed earlier from the prophets that when you walk through the fires, you will not be burned. Why? Because there is another one with you in the fire and he is the Holy Spirit. He is God inside of you. I was having this conversation with an elder, a beloved elder, uh, I believe from Georgia yesterday. And I told her, I said, I really don't think that the saints comprehend the power that's living inside of the resurrection and the power of Jesus Christ. Think about this. The same spirit of God that's inside of you that God has given you so that the Holy Spirit will compel you to preach the gospel. is the same spirit that spoke the cosmos into existence. And we're going to go in, in, in divine order. God said, let there be light. And that was Christ speaking that. And Christ spoke through the Holy Spirit as the spirit of God was hovering, up, hovering over the waters. And in the beginning... God was showing his son things in the heavenly realms, right? And through the spirit, Christ was creating the land out of dry water, uh, the dry land out of water. And that's the same power that lives in you inside of me. The very same spirit that spoke the, the galaxies and the cosmos into place. That's the same power because he's also God, the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost in us. See, you are not yourselves, Israelites. You are oneness with God. You may have been perfect through the blood of Jesus Christ. You're not your own. You are children. And if you're led by the Spirit of God, you are a child of God. Christ prayed this, the high priestly benediction of the prayer in John 17. That, Father, I pray that they would be one just as you and me and I in you and I in them and them in me. It's the Holy Spirit that brings you in oneness. Not that you're God, God in you. We're going to continue on. Here's what the Lord says. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. See, when you really put your faith in Jesus and you're really in the trenches and you're really on your, your face and on your knees, it is there that the power of the intercession of the Holy Spirit overtakes the spirit of the child of the living God. And he drives you to the word and he brings the word of God and he prays the word of God to the father. Uh, with the Lamb of God seated at the right hand of the throne. And there you are exalted to the heavens and the house and the sanctuary of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. You're entering to the, to the presence of the Holy of Holies by the blood of the Lamb, by the power of the Holy Spirit. You're there with Him and the Lord is touching you and the Lord is strengthening you when you're on your knees. And there the Holy Spirit will, will help you overcome when you live a life in submission and prayer to God just as our pioneer and perfecter of our faith did. The Holy Spirit has sealed your eternal destiny in your heart. 
But if you can grieve him, you can be stiff necked him. That's why some of you are not overcoming. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Right. And the Holy Spirit helps us say no and overcome the things of the world, but say yes to the kingdom of God. Let us examine the scripture in first John four, four. Satan can't take the peace of God, but the only reason a lot of saints don't have the peace of God because they're not in submission to the Lord Jesus Christ and allowing them, allowing the Holy Spirit to set them apart, meaning to be holy unto Jesus Christ. Not only to Jesus Christ, but unto the gospel as well. Let's give attention to the word of God in 1 John 4.4. 4. 1 John 4.4. 4. So. Wait a second. First John 4.4. 4. Um, and these things we write that your joy may be full. Right, I'm gonna stop. He's writing about the commands of God. He's testifying about Jesus. But it's the Holy Spirit writing the word of God, right? And if we back up to what Christ said, that in me you will have peace. In him is joy. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Once you are enabled by the Spirit to serve God and obey him, you will yield the fruit of joy and peace because there you will be doing your father's will. And as you're doing your father's will, you will rejoice in the Lord. The Lord is the joy of your salvation, right? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna close with these last two scriptures. Now greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, right? What that means is not only God has baptized you in the spirit and is going to lead you through the tribulations in the world, but the Holy Spirit is going to help you to overcome all things that when the fire comes up, when you're going through those trials, when you're going through the, the tribulation in the inner chamber of the heart and in the inner man, God is going to keep the fire burning and the zeal as you draw near to him in his word and in prayer and asking God to fill you with more of the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit will continue to give you the victory every day to walk a godly life in Christ Jesus. We're going to close out in 2 Timothy. Uh, 2 Timothy 3. Let's notate what um, Apostle Paul is saying here. Two. Give me a second. Let me find it. So the scripture says that anyone who wants to live a godly life will suffer persecution. And why are we suffering the persecution? Because the Holy Spirit is leading you in refinery. The Holy Spirit is leading you in the process of being transformed into the image of Christ. So don't, nah bro, I don't do my thing. It's the Lord bro for me to take glory for that. It ain't me, it's Christ in me. And I will not rob God of his glory. I'm just like you, I'm weak. A lot of people think I'm strong, but the truth is we're all weak and apart from Christ, we can do nothing. So I appreciate your words, bro, but I don't let people puff me up like that because I've been humbled a long time ago. You know, uh, many years ago, over a decade ago, people say, do you think, oh brother, you're strong? No, I'm weak. I am vulnerable to fall in sin at any time. But we're talking about the overcoming spirit, the power of the Holy Ghost. God has given us his power to say no. Amen. So, um, back to that. Um, you're going to suffer those persecutions. And I'd rather just go to Malachi and let the word of God. Um, yeah, but it's all him. It has nothing to do with me. Because if I want to do what I want, I'd still be stubborn. You know, so it's all God. Because God gets the glory and God gets the praise. Like I said, I appreciate your comments, but... God already gave me warning about this a long time ago, you know, so I, I listened to the voice of my father. You can tell me what you want, brother, and, and don't take offense, but I just want to point everyone to God 
and to his son. That's my aim is to point to the gospel and to the eternal word of God. And that, you know, in the words of John the Baptist, we must decrease, he must increase. So we're talking about that refinery. We're talking about being baptized in the spirit. Once you're baptized in the spirit, God fills you with his spirit. And as you're, he's going to lead you through the tribulation. He's not going to lead you around it. He's going to allow you to go through it. But we need to understand as children of God that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world so that you could depend upon the strength of the Lord and the battle is the Lord, not yours. Right. So here's what it says uh, in Malachi 3. But who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner, meaning Jesus sitting on the mercy and on the judgment seat and through the spirit. The seven spirits of God, he's facing it toward the last time, which is you and I that sit in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in the heavenly sanctuary in the house of God. Right. And God is, and Jesus. Right. He has the fullness of God and he's facing the fullness of God of the seven lamps of the seven spirits that are burning before the throne of God and the throne of the lamb. And he's facing them toward us to give us a full revelation of who God is, his holiness, his righteousness, his joy, his counsel, his peace, the fear of the Lord and so forth. Right. So he says he will sit as a refiner and as a purifier. Sir. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord and offer in righteousness. So your proper service is, is through the overcoming spirit of the power of the Holy Spirit is to offer your body as an offering unto the righteousness of God. Service unto God. The Holy Spirit put you in service unto the gospel and into the kingdom of God. And Christ is leading you through the baptism of the Spirit. And the fiery is the refinery process that you and I must go to. The persecutions, the trials, and the tribulations that is coming upon the world. And the child of God hits, gets hit with him because why? Christ is getting out the leaven. Are getting out the leaven. Are seeing in your heart. He's purging you out. He's putting that pressure on you. He, you know, we are the clay and he's the potter and the Holy Spirit's leading you through the fire. But God says, I will be with you and I will walk with you. Come out of her, my people, lest she share in her sins. We're talking about Babylon, the world, right? But you've been called as the, as the priesthood of Jesus Christ, the sons of Levi. You are offering, God has given you to his son, Jesus Christ, as an offering. You're to bring your body to the fruit of the Holy Ghost. And it's to God that you are to glorify him with your body. And this is the proper worship for the saints that you're sanctifying on your body unto the Lord. Because you don't belong to yourselves. You were bought with the price of the blood, the holy blood, the precious blood of the lamb. Right? So you and I are going through the process. And the Holy Spirit is taking us through the process. He's leading us in the wilderness. We're not wandering children. We're not vagabonds. We are led by the Spirit of God into the will of God. Right? So there it is. The Holy Spirit is going to help you to overcome. Jesus is facing the lampstand. The lamps, the seven lamps, the seven spirits of God toward the lampstand, the church. He's pressing more of the Holy Spirit inside of you. Not only through the word. But the Father will supply more of the Holy Spirit. So if you need to have victory in your life, it's because you need more of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to close in this. Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus that your word, your gospel, your seed will go into the earth now. Lord, raise up a remnant by the spirit of the living God. Lord, you're seeking godly offspring. I pray that they would take heed to their spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Lord, I pray that you will lead them through the spirit and in fire, Lord, in the full baptism of the Holy Spirit. Purge out of our hearts, Lord, evilness and wickedness. Cleanse our hearts by the blood of the Lamb from dead works that we may serve you, the true living God. In the inner chambers of the sanctuary in heaven, the tabernacle that the Lord erected himself, the temple of God. Lord, I pray that they would truly know and understand the power of God that's inside of them. That they would not fear the enemy, for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It even says in your word, the one born of God, which was the Messiah, protects him from the evil one and the wicked one cannot touch them. Lord, if the enemy is touching your people, rebuke the hand of the enemy. He has no power. The reason the Son of God was manifested was to destroy the works of the devil. Any work of the devil that's coming against the holy ones and the bread of the Lamb, may your spirit come down and demolish the strongholds, Lord. 
And Lord, I just pray that you continue to speak to your people, that you would touch them in a special way this week, that you would touch their hearts. If any of them are stiff necked show them the areas that they rebel in your life. So, Lord, that you can bless them, not only with the fullness of the joy of your salvation, not only with the blessing of forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus and through the blood of the Lamb, but, Lord, that you want to take care of your people because famine is coming to the land, Lord. But you're going to protect your people. You're going to keep them alive. And anyone... Any brother or sister that has been affected, Lord, um, by the plague uh, that's named in the COVID, uh, Lord, that you sent to get the attention of the nations, I pray that you begin to heal the saints that have been affected because of the rebellion towards you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.